All right, special occasion, just as I am rolling vigorously. How strong is the show gonna be? Let's see. Holy shit. 18! It's not 18, it's 19. So normally when you play D&D, if you've got a nice uh, DM, you get to roll four D6 and then drop the lowest one and that becomes your score for whatever. We, does that explain enough? No, who cares? We all like tech. Why not get a .tech domain? If you go over to get.tech, you can use coupon code CRIT1 to get one year for $3.99 and use coupon code CRIT10 to get 10 years for only $49.99. They've uh, sold 200000 so far, so run over and grab your .tech domain right now. Today we've got a bunch of fun stuff coming up. We've got uh, a lot of hardware news. Well, not a lot, but a decent amount of hardware news, some science technology news, uh, analog and video gaming news, and, oh yeah, I got some questions from you guys. So let's get down to it, shall we? First off, hardware news. All right, so NVIDIA, the 1080 Ti, or Ti, depending on who you speak with, there, both of those are kind of up in the air as far as the naming scheme goes. I'll say 1080 Ti because that's what incurs the least amount of wrath on the internet. <laughs> My actions now are like, what will incur the least amount of wrath on the internet? We've got a shirt for you guys coming up <laughs> very soon. <laughs> All right, speaking of our shirts, we got some cool new shirts. Anyway, 1080 Ti, 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, I'm really looking forward to this one for a few different reasons. Now, the 1080 was a, a beast of a car. Then you got the uh, the Titan X, which was kind of a monster, but the clock speeds are always lower on the Titan X. It's got more CUDA, you know, it's got a, a better memory bit width. They're just the bus, you know, size is bigger. This one has a bigger bus size, not quite as big as the um, the 10, I mean, the, the Titan X, but bigger than the, the 1080. It's a 320-bit card, 10 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, the thing that, the reason I'm going to, like, just kind of stand back and wait is because they have not announced the clock speeds yet. So if it has a pretty significant, uh, you know, frequency advantage over the Titan X, it could be pretty attractive. Now, if you guys remember in the past, the, the, the 980 Ti was the one that uh, really broke a ton of the records because the frequency advantage, and you could really push that card more than you could push a Titan. So may not have as many CUDA cores, and the rumored CUDA core count could be anywhere from 2944 all the way up to, th what is it, uh, um, 3328, so... But it should be out in January, so if you're thinking about getting a new GPU and you want the, the craziest one, you're thinking about maybe a Titan X, maybe wait until January, see what this is like. I would expect them to be priced pretty high to, to start, you know, like, but not as high as a Titan X. Quite a bit lower, as a matter of fact. Also, talking about chips, may as well talk about Qualcomm. Everyone has seen the Snapdragon 835 that has been announced. Kind of looking forward to playing around with that, but the thing that I'm very excited about is Quick Charge 4. Quick Charge 4, everybody. So... Um, Quick Charge 4, what they've done is they've gone in and they've made it more efficient. And one of the things about Quick Charge is you need to monitor the temperature of your battery. So that they've been able to lower the temperature by about 5 degrees, which is huge. And uh, they also have some fail-safes to say, like, hey, if the battery gets too hot, chill out. But 5 minutes, they're saying, 5 minutes should get you 5 hours of battery life. You know, Google has a, a, some other standards that they kind of like, but Quick Charge 4... Um, is going to be very universal. They say that it's going to work with lots of different adapters and that sort of thing, so there won't be as many proprietary things. You know, OnePlus has their own proprietary thing. I'm hoping all that's going to go away soon, and we will just move to a global standard with high ampage. Yes. All right. What, what did GoPro do wrong? Do you know what GoPro did wrong? Because Karma just happened. The GoPro Karma, they, uh, you know, came up with a new drone, fly it around, and they're dropping out of the sky. So I guess that's karma. That should be their marketing slogan. Someone out there knows that there should be a joke. Like, they, they did something, they screwed up, they they bothered somebody. I don't know, They uh, some guy in some weird country used it for bad purposes, and now it's karma. I don't know. Figure something out in the comments. Obviously, I'm not clever enough, but you guys can do it for me. Let's check out some watches now. How about that? Watches on, on a tech show. So... This watch here is made by Matrix Industries, and it doesn't require any batteries. How do they power it? Well, they power it through uh, sort of a thermoelectric thing going on, which is, you know, powering it through heat transfer. Now, your body does a really good job of regulating heat. It pulls the heat from your body. The entire, um, I, I guess, the whole faceplate and just, like, the whole design of the thing, it's actually hiding a heat sink. You guys can see there. That's actually a, a very clever design. It's a heat sink, so your body heats it. There's a drastic change in temperature between the top and the bottom, and that can help to generate the power. Wear this thing. It's not as fancy as, you know, some of the different Android devices out there. Maybe not the Apple Watch either. 
but no batteries. I think it's about time to talk about some gaming, and then we'll talk about science after that, but I'm feeling just kind of laid back, so Justin, get over here and let's talk about some gaming! Justin's here, we're going to talk about game stuff. You Hi. ready to talk about nudity? Yeah, always. I'm glad so you're happy here. to always talk about nudity. <laughs> yeah, thank God you brought me on the nudity expert. Yes, uh, yeah. you've seen lots of naked things. So many. Yes. Uh, so well. you're you're a hi everyone. I'm Justin. Uh, <laughs> and so the first thing we're talking about now is Watch Dogs Two or Horn Dogs Two, more like. Did you write that joke before you got here? Maybe. Okay. All right. So, uh, a PlayStation user, uh, Goron2000, actually got his account banned, their account banned, I should say, got their account banned for posting a picture of a dead prostitute, which was accidentally blown up in the no. process of blowing stuff right. up, like prostitutes often by standards usually are in these kind of games. Uh, but they're always where the bombs go off. That's right. Or, or the gunfire. There's always pro Maybe there's just prostitutes everywhere, and after they're dead, they're like, oh, they happen to be a prostitute. Maybe they're just yeah. in cities. They're, they're bystanders first, prostitutes second. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, one of these particular bystander toots happened to have uh, a fully rendered vagina on it that was just splayed out there for every city. We don't have the... Uh, the not safe for work version on here, but there's definitely links in this article that you can follow. Hey, if you want to go thing. look at that if stuff, it's your thing, yeah. Go check out some some Pixel Choach. Get it. Then, Why do we not name our channel Pixel Choach? We, we there's still time. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> so Maybe. the big thing about this game is that the reason that the the person was uh, kicked off was because it went against the PlayStation Network's like code of conduct, basically. So a game that they allow to have be played. You can't actually post scenes from it because it might have some computer-generated boobies on it. The thing that's interesting to me about this is no one's a, you know no one's upset that a hooker got blown up. They're upset that mm. after she was dead, you could see her private bits. <gasps> so that's that's shocking and terrifying mm. to Americans who have never seen naked people. Even though when you drive across the country, you'll notice that it's pretty much a church strip club, church strip club. It's like one makes you guilty, one makes you feel better. One makes you guilty, one relieves the tension. Yeah. It's an interesting marketing thing they've got going on. So, and the other thing too is like they can, you know, people can post images onto the the PlayStation Network all the time about like bodies being splattered all over the place, like blood and entrails everywhere. Here's the like sick rocket kill I just did on this yeah, guy, yeah. and his like his head flew across the screen, and oh the ragged office and stuff like that. These people dying left and right, people being blown apart. But the second you see a nipple, all of a sudden it's like fuck. Fuck, hang on. <laughs> this is not okay anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Now, that's that's something that's, um, you know, Australia, America, different places like that. They freak out over nudity. Violence is mm -hmm. not really a big thing. Well, it kind of everything's everything's not cool in Australia. Yeah. In Australia, everything will kill you, like all the, you know, flora and fauna. But they don't want to watch it on TV, and they do, do not want it in their video games. <laughs> don't want so. to be reminded of the harsh <laughs> reality of where they live. In Germany... <laughs> You can you can have nudity in advertising and that sort of thing, and you yeah. can you can show like you know scantily clad people in games or nudity in games, uh, male and female. But they if you're go. at a you know show like Gamescom, if there's gore, viscera, that sort of thing, you have to go behind a curtain or into a into a sealed off room, and you have to be like they have to check your age to make sure you're of age to see violence. So I'm gonna there's all these different standards all over the globe, but here I'm just gonna throw something out there and let you guys chew on it in the comments. If you had a kid who was like two or three years old and you're watching a movie that had some nudity in it. And the, the child was sitting there with you. Someone walks across the screen naked. Mm. Nudity. 20 minutes later in the movie, someone breaks into someone's house and pulls their face off and pulls their eyes out. A gory, visceral, you know, like, Dead Space Mortal Kombat yeah. style violence. You know, just yeah. like, Ugh. Okay, so then they have a nightmare. What do you think happens when they wake up? Do you think they go, <gasps> a boob? Or do you think they actually go, <gasps> someone's face came off? Yeah. Like which 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 is going to disturb them enough to give them nightmares? Which is going to result in therapy later? I, I don't know. I'm just curious. I'm also not really against violence. If you're old mm -hmm. enough or you have a you know <clears throat> the capacity to view violence and that sort of thing, I'm like whatever. You guys want to watch people's heads explode, whatever. But I I just I'm, I would be a terrible parent. I'd be like, yeah, put them in that room, let them watch everything. Just let them watch <laughs> naked people killing each other with chainsaws, whatever. That'll make them tough. It's I, awful. The, <laughs> so the other terrible. issue here too is that. Uh, the Watch Dogs community, they actually, like, slipped their rating past the... the well, they were sneaky, yeah. Yeah. So they said, like, oh, this this show has, you know, it has brief scenes of both male and female full frontal nudity, which is, okay, brief implies, like, you know, when someone runs by fully naked in that one shot in Airplane, like, ah, that's a brief scene of full frontal nudity. Mm -hmm. This, and there are links in here, we hear, um, of there's, like... 
a hippie colony where there's just like everyone's naked and there's a dude just like bug ass naked pissing on the street in there like things like that so the the watchdogs guys have said yeah we're gonna fix this we're gonna you know make a patch and patch out that JJ there to make sure no other people get offended but they're only getting rid of the stuff that people are complaining about they're still keeping the overall nudity intact but somehow this they've managed to slide in under the AO rating which PlayStation Network and a lot of other places will absolutely not carry games that have the AO rating and it's very unappealing to a lot of different networks and stuff because it's just not as marketable but so so a lot of games are like being like yeah it's just a couple boobs once mature rating you know yeah that's kind of a problem I, I also want to know what it would take for violence to achieve an AO rating I mean the game hatred maybe but like Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat and stuff is more seen as like joke it's a joke you know like haha -ha -ha. remember that game pistol reviewed uh, Last oh that one maybe that that one I don't know man that would probably just be mature that's probably still just gonna be mature but damn yeah. that was that was brutal if you guys didn't watch that last week you should totally watch that because it looks <clears throat> freaking awesome yeah but anyway yeah. I'm curious to know what you guys think about it in the comments mm -hmm. um, we could go into a whole I mean this could be like a whole documentary on you know nudity and violence in games mm -hmm. you know like just sit there and eat popcorn and watch it I don't yeah. know it could be but we need to do research and all that kind of stuff could just be clickbait yeah yeah it yeah. could be mm -hmm. yeah click on this vagina would you yeah. and then we'll show you a penis I <laughs> got you <laughs> all right um, HTC Vive has gone wireless but only in China HTC they're gonna be making a wireless kit it took them a little while they're uh, teaming up with TP cast and this is a pretty cool device it's gonna cost around 220 US dollars um, and I mean, it, 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 it's cool because the amount of bandwidth going to this is substantial, and doing that seamlessly enough to play games is also a pretty substantial achievement. But anyway, they've got it. They made it. It's coming out in China, and they have no plans on selling this in the USA. This kind of makes me sad. Well, I mean, but the, the VR culture is also a lot bigger in China. I don't know if I would say bigger. Right? It's like they don't yeah. do it in homes as much, but they have VR cafes right. over there. So That's something we don't have. Yeah, I mean, when we go over there to Wuhan, we might be able to, if we can find one, we'll go check one out and play around. But it's, it seems to be more of a social yeah. thing where you sit around and have a coffee or a beer and watch your friends flail around madly with a thing on their head. Yeah. It's kind of like watching them with a friendly head grab. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just hugging his face. That's why we call them face huggers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you can order it as long as you're willing to pay the shipping. You can order it and uh, get <coughs> one in. So I'm thinking maybe we should grab one because the, the worst thing about VR right now, especially when you talk about the Vive stuff that's like, you know, you wander around a room instead of sit still like you, like you do mm -hmm. with the Oculus, the, the cord. It's a huge problem. You know, you're tripping over it. You're always brushing it out of the way. It ruins immersion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't. It, 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 you can't run full speed into walls anymore because the cord may jerk your head back. That's no fun. <sighs> So, anyway. It's like they don't want us to hurt ourselves at all anymore. So, first off, Vive, bring Boring. it. Come on, guys, bring it to America. We want it, too. Yeah. That's that's pretty much all. We promise we'll be good with it. We won't. All right, probably the, probably the coolest news of the day. Dungeons & Dragons has been inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame. Woo! Don't step on those. These hurt. So, d d it was officially inducted this year into the Toy Hall of Fame as a cultural mainstay in board games. So, um, so with this one, it has to be fun. It has to promote creativity. It has to be um, have some sort of cultural impact. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to be, like, widely renowned kind of deal, which Dungeons & Dragons is. So now it is official. One of the best toys ever. Take that, everyone else. You know, it's, there's a lot of people out there complaining, you know, like, Transformers has not been inducted. Neither has yeah. Care Bears. People are freaking out about that. Nobody cares about that. Yeah, no one, no one cares. Mm -hmm. bears, bears. But this is really cool because, uh, you know, through all of its up and downs and everything like that, D&D &D has kind of stayed through its, you know, your worshipping Satan years into now becoming an actual... Like mainstay, you know. Speaking of someone that's worked at a game store and right. things like that, now Dungeons and Dragons has become a thing that like parents are playing with their kids. There's like whole new Whoa. generations of people that are that are like coming in and being like, "Oh, I played this when I was in high school a billion years ago. I want to try it again and stuff like that." Wow. Um, so it's just becoming and it's becoming less like I play D and D. I'm not gonna talk about it in high school though because I don't want people to make fun of me. It's not like that scary secret thing you do in your basement anymore. Now it's like widely accepted to say like hey i play dungeons and dragons and people are like oh that's fucking awesome because dude, it is fucking awesome dude when i grew up i was not allowed to play dungeons and dragons but we made our own little version of it we wrote up a little rule book mm -hmm. from you know like playing second at our friend's house a lot and we wrote up a little rule book and we had all these folders and papers and we would hide them under the bed 
And, you know, if, even if my mother found them, she probably wouldn't know what they were. But the reason I wasn't allowed to play is because it would, it, like, she believed that, that one became a character. And in the act of becoming this character, well, this is what, like, a preacher came to town and told everyone. The act of becoming a character was the act of you becoming demon-possessed. <laughs> And then um, there were all these oh, stories about sure like, too. yeah, <laughs> there are all these stories like, you know, like, oh, did you hear that Jim down the street? Yeah, his his son started playing Dungeons and Dragons and he was he was a wizard. And the incantations that are in the book are actual mm. demonic spells. And yeah. when they read them aloud, they unlock doors to hell. And now the next thing you know. He's a real wizard. Mm, which and he's would filled be with the Satan's power. Super cool to be a real wizard. Just and, I was, saying. and I was like, that's kind of badass, mother. That sounds <laughs> super cool. You are not making this sound worse, mom. Yeah, yeah but then he killed his family or something like oh, that. Like, oh. you know, like, oh, that, the, and wherever there was a murder, it was like, that's probably a Dungeons and Dragons murder. Yeah, yeah, but think of the experience he got for the whole family. <laughs> Let's move on to the next. <laughs> no, no, we got. We, I've got. I've got to justify this further. Now, the reasons that this were, were this was inducted mm -hmm. rather than like some other game like Transformers or Care Bros or something like that, it promotes creativity. Uh, there's a, well, yeah. not really that much history involved in this, but mm -hmm. uh, critical thinking, um, thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. just the whole abstract thought. Team uh, building. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, math. It teaches you mm -hmm. how to do basics of math. Uh, helps kids pretend that they're drinking well before they're able to drink because mm -hmm. they're in a bar. Uh, helps murder hobos. Yeah. <laughs> so while we're on the whole, like, pretending to drink, yeah, it does sort of turn into a, the game of murder hobos. And if you're not sure what that is, go ahead and Google it. It's kind of funny. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, and, and if you play a game of D&D &D and you, your band is a bunch of murder hobos, tell your uh, DM to come up with some more fun scenarios. Come on. Yeah. That's, that's just my pressure on you guys. All right. So anyway, that's pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Next up. Oh, this thing, yeah. Yeah, so the new uh, Nintendo Classic or NES Classic Edition is, you know, came out. It's a um, tiny little Nintendo. It's got a few games on it, 30 games, something like that on it. And uh, 60 bucks, not too bad. It comes with a couple controllers. That the, the, the cord on these controllers is like two and a half feet long. That's about it. It's like very short. Like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Like sit on top of my television to play the damn thing? So they've got some wireless controllers coming out and all that sort of thing. But what's interesting, I think people are going insane over this system from like the 80s it's like the early 80s like 80 81 i forget when it was but yeah you guys will know in the Maybe comments yeah. 60 bucks and now it's already going for 180 so like this thing is just getting more like nintendo is just profiting by okay. re-releasing the same stuff that they've been releasing for the past it looks like the same 30 years this is the same batch of games that they released on their um like their 3DS package of NES games, right? Yeah. Yep. So all they did was basically repackage it. It seems like it's just going to be emulating on this different hardware. And then, blam, there you go. Now, what, what gets me is like, okay, yeah, you've got this, but you know you guys can go grab a Raspberry Pi, and you can have, like, all the games on there. Like, you can get Recall Box or Retro Pi, whichever one you want. I've got Recall Box right here. Is the mm -hmm. one Retro Pi is over here. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can go grab this. Let me just show you how many different systems this thing will emulate. All these different systems here. Jesus. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to be going for um, Recall Box because mm -hmm. just X Y Z. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have the Commodore 64 support, but it has all everything else, and it runs on a Raspberry Pi that's like 35 bucks. So we're making a video showing you guys how to do this very mm -hmm. soon because this is what you need rather than the Nintendo. Plus, you can customize your own cases for it, so you can make it look like whatever you want. We've seen cases that people have built out of Legos. We've seen cases that people have, like, you know, 3D printed their own cool cases and designs for it. So, it's cost less, you can do more with it, and you can customize it more. Sorry. So, uh, next up we have... Mm -hmm. What's next? Science and culture. So, good luck with that. Bye. Science culture. We got a couple couple bits of news from uh, Microsoft. First off, let's talk about Elon Musk and uh, his relationship with Microsoft. They're working together on a VR initiative, and they're keeping it open source. And he's also working together with Peter Thiel and Sam uh, Altman. Their nonprofit is called Open AI. And here's what's really cool about this: Microsoft has been doing a lot for the open source community. So hats off to those guys. I mean, they're still a, you know a walled garden company, and they've done a lot of dumb things. But hey, I've got to say. They've been pretty good stewards, um, and their track record's been pretty good when it comes to taking care of open source projects. They're working on this together for a few different reasons, but Elon Musk is someone who has been very careful, and he said things like, hope we're not just the biological bootloader for digital superintelligence. Unfortunately, that is increasingly probable. So that's what he had to say about that, and he is really worried about you know one company coming out with AI and then controlling it, using it to either manipulate or 
you know, enter doomsday scenario here. Um, and also, if it were to run rampant, that would be very bad because it could be, you know, like, we're the first creature out there that is going to be creating the next step in the evolutionary change when we hit the singularity. Uh, it's not going to be like standard evolution anymore. We are creating our next evolution. That's really weird. Transhumanism is going to come into play. Um, and, and it's just going to be a different universe. I don't think anyone can really imagine what's going to happen. But once, we, once the AI, AI is a real thing, things are going to change. Now let's imagine a private company gets this and they sell it to, I don't know, a debt collector or something like that. So now you have robots coming to collect your debts. Listen and understand. These debt collection robots are out there. They can't be bargained with. They can't be reasoned with. They don't feel pity or remorse or fear. And they absolutely will not stop until your debts are collected. Imagine. Is that the world you want to live in? Anyway, Elon Musk is trying to avoid many of those things. Plus, um, keeping it open allows other people to contribute. And once AI is achieved, if it is, they've thrown over a billion dollars or about a billion dollars at this so far. Once AI is achieved, it'll be achieved for all of us. Madness is everywhere, guys. Cats cuddling with dogs. Horses riding humans. Lions and lambs having dinner together at a steakhouse. These things are all happening. And beyond that, Microsoft has joined the Linux Foundation. Google has joined .NET. I was like 15 years ago or something, Steve Ballmer said that the Linux Foundation was cancer. Or maybe he said, cancer! I don't know. That's how he talks or not. But anyway, it's kind of interesting because Microsoft has been working a lot with um, open source initiatives. And they're probably doing this because they want to help the Hyper-V extensions so they can virtualize everything. Um, there's also more reasons to this. They want to make sure that their stuff runs better on, you know, other environments, Android environments, Java environments. I mean, Java, I wouldn't say it's winning over .NET, but um, it's interesting that Google has joined the .NET Foundation because now Google wants to make sure that their stuff runs on that. It's like everybody wants to make sure that everything can play nicely together. And if anyone doesn't know, .NET is sort of the competitor to Java, which is what Android is using heavily. Interesting stuff there. I would imagine that Microsoft really wants to take advantage of the, the Hyper-V so they can virtualize and, you know, just run a million different installations of Windows inside Linux. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Who knows? So Adobe has created a new program. And with this program, you can take audio and you can rearrange words not by, you know, grabbing a piece of audio like you used to do and, and moving it over here. It actually listens and then says, okay, here's the sentence, here's the words, and then it lets you retype the words in different orders, and it can rearrange them intelligently and make it sound like the person said something different. You can also duplicate words. Now, get this. Here's the, here's the crazy part. The part where I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting technology, but here is what really hurts my brain. Let's say um, you have 20 minutes of someone talking you know orator up there just talking for 20 minutes what you can do is you can take that adobe will analyze it and then it will allow you to re-synthesize voice which means that you can sit down and type brand new sentences and then it makes the person sound like they actually said those things you know what that means <laughs> you know did you know that donald trump's toupee is actually made out of tinfoil because he is a robot controlled by this adobe program Everything that comes out of his mouth is typed by someone in a basement somewhere. I believe he was hacked for a while because I some of the stuff that came out of his mouth, there's no way that's real. There's no way. This is the only this is the only explanation. Adobe has been using Donald Trump as a testing device for this new technology. And at first it started off as a joke. They're like, oh, look, I'm going to make him say this. And then he was you know, all saying all these things. The real Donald Trump's been dead for years. Um, and they made him say all these crazy things. And then now we've got this this robot running the country. <laughs> Why did you have a system? What? Oh, man. By the time this is over, I'm going to be living in a van with 12 cats. This is a, this is real, guys. Not joking. Does this thing... This thing messes with my brain too. I don't think, I think putting this on actually does things to me. See? Get it off. So anyway, that's all 100% true. And if you don't believe me, you can uh, jump off a bridge because I'm right. Analog, I think it's about time for an episode of Analog. You guys want to see an episode of Analog? Justin, are you ready with an episode of Analog? Uh, over to you. What? Oh, 
Pokemon Moon. Yeah, I got the the Moon version of of this one. I've been pretty excited about this actually. Are you serious? Like you didn't you didn't actually plan anything because you're playing some kid game? Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it's like gotten really great reviews and everything like that. So, oh. are you, are you kidding me? Really, I'm kind of a fan. Seriously. Yes. Really. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Catch them is my real test. So could you could you at least build me some Lego? Fine, I'll build you Lego. Ugh. Fast, thank you very much. Lego set 6887, the Allied Avenger. Blacktron, it's from the second iteration of Blacktron. This one has a little bit of white on it and some, uh, like this neon yellowy green thing. It's part of the Blacktron Future Gen set. That's what it actually was. And one thing that's interesting about this is the cockpit here. It's modular. It comes right off there. See, it popped off. And you can actually attach this to other Blacktron sets. Look at all this stuff here. There's your driver. So, um... I think one thing that's interesting about Lego, um, their older sets were typically, well, almost all of them were original IP, and they had some pretty cool space stuff. Right now, all their space stuff is just Star Wars, and, and that's cool if you like Star Wars, but I feel like Star Wars has been played out when it comes to toys. Almost half the aisles now in the stores are, you know, Star Wars. I kind of like to look back in time. This is 1991, and, dude, I'll put this up against an X-Wing any day. Come on. It's got, like, lasers and stuff. Yeah. This first next X-Wing, I'll, I'll got my money on this thing. Anyway, that's the Lego for the day. For this, We got sets for the set, but a lot of it was like stuff I missed out on in my childhood, and I cried and cried and cried, and so now we have them. Commercial break. Hi, everybody. This is John Ogenfogan. This is not Logan. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, uh, he wouldn't do an advertisement for his own store. Maybe he would. I don't know. Anyway, there's a bunch of new shirts in there. You guys should go check them out. Uh, this, you should buy it. We won't tolerate you not buying it. Got the new logo. You like that sword. It'll put your eye out. Hey, how about the Burning Earth Pixel logo long sleeve? Got some long sleeve in, got some beanies in. Mugs, jars, mouse pads. Everybody loves a good mouse pad. Oh, here's a good one for the holidays. W weapons, all of them. All from PC games. How about it? Get on that. We'll see you guys over on epicpants.com, the best store on the website, on the internet. Right here, my right hand, I've got tonight's top three things. These are inbox questions from different people. Let's start with the middle one first. Yes. This is from Jeff. Hi, Logan. Network admin here from Canada. As you know, Canadians try to pride on brew making here. Canadians try to pride on brew making here. You try to pride, sir. Like you get together with a bunch of people and, and walk through savannas? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. All right, what's your favorite kind of beer and whiskey? Alexander Keith seems to be the beer of choice here. Also, I know folks go crazy over Crown Royal, uh, but for some reason I fancy Jim Beam. Additionally, how is Doug doing? Help you guys take care of him. Uh, Doug has recovered from uh, alcohol poisoning from about a shot of whiskey we gave him. Uh, the, whis the whiskey I like to drink um, is typically just good Kentucky bourbon. I'm um, not too into the smokier stuff, and I'm not sorry into the Canadian blended whiskeys all that much. Not into Irish whiskey. Jameson's good. I'd put it on cornflakes and have it for breakfast in the morning, but I probably wouldn't drink a glass of it myself unless there was nothing else around. Uh, rye bourbon's good too, but also Wheaton bourbon is good. Uh, favorite beer? Just name an IPA from Vermont, and it's probably one of the best beers in the world. And you can look that up in your Funkin' Wagnalls. So I, I just really like IPAs, but I like East Coast IPAs. West Coast IPAs are good, but... East Coast IPAs are better. And that's a fact. Science proves it. I do like some Canadian beers, though, and I will... If I'm ever up in Canada, we'll have to try some. Next question is from Carnage. 
Logan, I was watching this interview with Alex Hoffman of Fallujah. I know you love these guys, and he talks about the use of electronic music and metal. I was wondering if you had any plans in incorporating metal in Zweihander. I can hear the influences of metal in your music, and I think it'd be cool if you did a collaboration of some kind. What are your thoughts on this? I have spoken to some peeper. Peeper. What's the word peeper? peeper, peeper, peeper. I even talked to uh, Andrew Holster a little bit. He's the guy who does some of the um, the music for Rise of the Triad. He did all the Doom remakes. He said he was willing to work on a track together. Uh, that could be kind of cool. Um, I can play a lick or two on the guitar myself. So if I had a, a stack amp and uh, guitar, actually you can do most of that through the computer these days. But if I had like a, a decent guitar, I might add some in there. But no guarantees. But I do like the sound of a, a guitar with 8-bit stuff. Last question is from a complete stranger on the internet. Dear Logan, I recently built my first gaming PC and it's going great, but I didn't have a budget to fit in, a, in headphones and now I'm starting to look at some options. I'm having trouble finding a good pair of headphones, but I simply cannot decide. One of my main concerns is noise leaking uh, in, ruining the immersion. Uh, I'm not worried about sound leaking out, and I live with my family so I can't get out of the hood. But I still would like some directional audio. Any recommendations? My budget is from 50 to 100. I mostly play FPS games like CSGO and TF2. As for music, I mostly listen to metal, uh, Metallica. That's the genre, I guess. And uh, do enjoy some extra bass in my music. Thanks so much for helping, and I love your videos. Keep it up. Well, what would I recommend? Now, you've, you've given me sort of a conundrum here, because a lot of the headphones I would recommend in this price range are open back, and they're going to let a lot of sound in from the outside. Uh, it's usually easier to get clean. What is this? I dropped those. Um... Let's just go ahead and take a look at the Audio-Technica ATH M30X or the M40X. Uh, if you can see the 50s for a good price, whatever, but in that price range, I, I think that the highs and the mids are not perfect, but the lows are okay. You wanted a little extra bass. They're, they're not too bad. Um, there's sort of a 40 millimeter drivers. They're um, got sort of a more neutral sound. If you are able to isolate yourself in a better environment or just close your door or something, the, the, the uh, Samsung SR850s and also the Superlux 6 uh, 6.8B do have cleaner sound, in my opinion, but uh, the Audio Technica will do a decent job, and you still have a little bit of money left over to grab a, a, a you know an Antlion mod mic or something like that, which I recommend. Ching. <laughs> no, they didn't give me any money to say that. They're just they're just they just sound pretty good. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the show today. Uh, thanks very much for watching. We've got awesome new T-shirts, guys. They are amazing. If uh, if you if you buy one, you will get one in the mail as a prize when you pay for it. Anyway, click on all the stuff over here at the side and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Let us know what you think and everything, etc. Okay, bye. Stop playing that goddamn game. I swear to God. Here on his Twitter. Hope we're not just a biological bootloader for the digital super... Super intelligence. Super intelligence. I don't have super intelligence.